When the wreck first happened, I honestly thought that it was Ricky Rudd that wrecked because I knew he was in the high lane with Schrader. Um, obviously, Earnhardt had been throwing a lot of blocks, but I didn't think that he was the one that had crashed. There was a black car. I just saw a black car at the top of the screen, and then it disappeared. And he showed Michael Waltrip coming down to win his first race in his 463rd start. I mean, a huge story. And I think back to all those times that, you know, he was driving the Pennzoil Pontiac. I always loved that paint scheme. I always hoped he would win his first race in that car. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Uh, by now, this team's not even there anymore, really. Uh, and Michael comes out and he wins the 500, just like Derek Cope and Sterling Marlin, these other first-time winners. Huge story. I mean, of course, just get completely swept up in it. Hardly noticed, really, the shot of, uh, you know, of course, seeing, you know, knowing by this point that Earnhardt was in that wreck. You see Earnhardt's car and you see Schrader's car on the apron. Uh, you know, I didn't notice at first that the window net was still up, that Earnhardt wasn't out of the car. I saw Schrader out of the car. Um, they just kind of cut away from that pretty quickly. Uh, and yeah, from there, it's just like, oh my gosh, I mean, this is just huge. This is amazing. Um, now, then when they got back from the commercial break, they showed a bunch of equipment, like way more cars around Earnhardt's car and that he still wasn't out of the car. And then what really changed things was that shot of that ambulance leaving the track really slowly. And that was just such an unusual sight to me. I mean, I, I didn't have any background in really the medical field. So I was kind of telling myself, it's like, oh, well, they're just being careful, you know, but I mean, like careful with what? Uh, you know, I mean, you, you see an ambulance and they're always like rushing to get to the hospital. I know the hospital wasn't that far away from the track, but still. Um, so there was that. And then from there, the broadcast ended pretty quickly. I understood they ran over time because of the big wreck. Uh, and so the broadcast was over with and, and then it was just like, oh, well, okay. So we'll do the post-race shows going to be up later. So I'll check that out and see what's going on. So in the meantime, I was a senior in high school at the time. Uh, I had to get some cash for lunch that week. So I remember walking out to my driveway to get to my car. And as I did that, uh, I suddenly kind of had the thought of Grant Adcox's accident at Atlanta in 1989 and this didn't necessarily come out of nowhere. Uh, I had found a friend in New York State that was selling uh, tapes of old races on eBay. And, uh, you know, I, I had been interested in J.D. McDuffie at this point. So I, had, I got a copy of that race from Watkins Glen in 91 and, and Adcox, too. Uh, and, you know, I'd, I'd seen those over the, uh, over the winter. And, uh, you know, kind of thinking about how long, especially in the case of, uh, it, well, really in both cases, like how it took a long time to get those drivers out of their cars and uh you know but then i kind of brushed it off and just like okay well this is kind of a different situation it's not like that um so i went out and went to the atm probably about 20 minutes round trip got there and back uh not really a big deal um so i got back and you know again this is a very different time you didn't have social media you didn't i mean you had the internet but you know nascar's website was was still kind of in its infancy and everything so when i got back and the race broadcast of course was over and it was going to be a while till Fox did their post-race show, so I turned on SportsCenter. Now, I mean, you know, just out of habit, uh, obviously ESPN didn't have rights to the Cup Series anymore, so I wasn't sure if they'd really have any information. The first thing I saw, first person I saw, was Dr. Jerry Punch. And he had this look on his face. He was just, he was pale. Uh, his eyes looked very heavy. Uh, and the body language, I mean, clearly the worst had happened. And really things kind of really slowed down at that point and it didn't take long to really kind of put things together from what had happened at the end of the broadcast the slow moving ambulance Earnhardt's accident the, the the kind of rushed kind of end to the broadcast uh and to really understand what they were talking about and of course Dr. Jerry Punch was talking about Earnhardt and saying that oh he used to be uh you know very you know believed to be kind of selfish on the track and that he was always kind of racing for himself but then he was very selfless on the track and kind of hearing this and and saying that, you know, at one point that it was going to be impossible to really kind of understand that story because he's gone. And that was the first word of that. It's like, he's gone. Like, you know, my God, just what, what on earth? And then, and, and then, you know, uh, shortly after that, they did a replay of Mike Hilton's uh, report where, you know, his press conference where he came out and said that we've lost Dale Earnhardt. And that's when, when my brother came down, we were watching that and, you know, we'd watch the finish the race and, you know, I remember him saying, he's like, he's dead. And the first word out of my mouth, even after hearing all this, even after hearing all this and knowing that this had happened, 
the first word I said still was no. And it wasn't like out of despair so much. It was more just, I was just incredulous. I was just like, no, like, no, no, that's not possible. Like, no, that's, that's, it, you can't even imagine it. I mean, not to, to have had Earnhardt there. I mean, you know, obviously there'd been a NASCAR before Dale Earnhardt. There was going to be one after, but you know, I mean, I'd grown up in the sport during his entire most, you know, the, the time that he was most popular, he'd been active in NASCAR for longer than I'd been around. Um, it, it, it's no stretch to say that it was to the thought of, of, of racing without, not only without him being as a driver, but without him being there period, just, I just couldn't imagine it. And so I think I just, you just kind of push it out of my mind. And even a week later when they did the next race, I still remember in the opening laps of that race, I still had a thought in my mind, even after all the reports and all the tributes and everything else that had happened, I still had a thought in that moment saying, well, you know, Dale missed the start of the race, but he can get back out there. 